Ooh, welcome everyone to another episode of Slasher Scotty. I am your host, Scotty McCoy, and boy, do I have a surprise for all of you. I have on Zoom with me right now a Seath Akbar, and he is the director of the film The Commando, which is coming out, oh, which is either out or coming out. We'll find that out in a little bit. I can't wait <laughs> to talk about this uh, movie. I know I've been in touch with Phil Herman, and uh, he finally set this up, and I'm so excited to have you on. How you doing, Asif? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me here, Scotty, and no glad to be here chatting with you. Awesome. So the first question, just to give everybody a general background about your filmmaking career, how did you get your start into filmmaking? Um, I actually um, always knew that I wanted to be a filmmaker and storyteller ever since, you know, I was a little kid, like three, mm -hmm. four years old. Um, and I, you know, kind of took the journey um, of exploring how films are made and what it takes to get into um, this industry from an early age, uh, started off as acting as a child and then uh, grew into making my own content uh, early on in my preteen, teenage years, and then kind of spiraled that into my education in, in film and television and uh, just kept making content and uh, networking and, and uh, just, you know, as I grew, it kind of grew with me and I matured into more of the business side of it and um, ended up, you know, producing a lot and then directing, writing. Um, I kind of put acting a little behind me now as I've mm -hmm. been focusing more on behind the camera work. Nice. Um, but it's been a journey and, and it's been a long mm -hmm. time, but I feel like I'm just getting started. So very excited for, you know, what's nice. to come. Nice, nice. So uh, I guess for those that are unaware, what is The Commando all about? Can you give us a brief synopsis about it? Yeah, absolutely. So The Commando did release recently in the okay. U.S. and North America on January 7th uh, nice. through theaters and limited theatrical and throughout the states. Mm -hmm. And it's available now on VOD and digital, pretty much anywhere you can buy or rent movies now. And then I believe it'll be coming up on uh, subscription streaming uh, later on after it's run its course. So I'm very happy with the release and distribution we were able to get, very blessed with that. And the film, it's uh, about a, a DEA agent, uh, James Baker, played by Michael Jai White, um, who comes home uh, from a botched mission recently. And, um, you know, he gets PTSD yeah. uh, very severely on, on a bad level because uh, he realizes because of his um, uh, commanding, uh, you know, lead uh, through the mission. Um, there were some innocent bystanders, a mother and her two daughters that were killed in the okay. crossfires between him and the bad guys. And so that sticks with him. And that's what triggers his PTSD. And people forget that, you know, this is a very common issue mm -hmm. in our society. And a lot of people can have it that you don't even know about. There are people close right. to you and there could be trigger points. So, you know, he returns home with this and mm -hmm. he has multiple trigger points throughout his regular home life. And, um, and people also tend to forget, um, it's not just the one individual that suffers from the PTSD directly, mm -hmm. but it also, um, you know, affects the family and friends around them, you know? And so it, it's about how he starts dealing with it and how mm -hmm. he seeks help um, to be able to deal with it and get better. And in the meantime, you have Mickey Rourke and his gang who um, uh, invades his home uh, to retrieve uh, $3 million that Mickey had stashed in that home uh, before he went to prison. So um, it, it's, it's mainly about this guy who has to overcome his own demons and struggles mm -hmm. and vulnerability to PTSD mm -hmm. to now be able to uh, flip that switch and save his family when there's an outside threat that's mm -hmm. coming in to, you know, that's being a danger to his family. So uh, we've tried to focus a lot on the PTSD aspect of it and the character yeah. development and that whole issue of how it affects the family mm -hmm. and how you can seek help. That was mm -hmm. one of our main issues and, and messages we wanted to put across to the audience. And of course, you know, we had Michael Jai White and Mickey Rourke, so we had to support it with some action. But mm -hmm. in reality, it's more of a crime thriller, um, yeah. you know, with some supporting action. Nice, nice. I remember uh, the first movie I actually seen Mickey Rourke in was The Wrestler. Uh, I believe he's in that with oh, Marcy. Amazing film. 
one yeah, of the, probably his best film ever and then rightfully so you know i uh, went to the oscars and everything so um absolutely yeah, absolutely Brilliant yeah. film great great actor and the same with michael j white and another amazing actor and you know having them in this movie i mean that that in and of itself is is amazing and i can only imagine what their talent and what they really brought to this film and how they brought it to life which is pretty amazing absolutely phenomenal yeah and and, and you know to be working under the tight schedule we did mm-hmm. and the limitations and out with, with a fast-paced production yeah during the pandemic uh, mm-hmm. I'd say they brought it their all. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. we shot the whole movie in 11 days, believe it or right. not. So for <laughs> us to be nice. able to complete this in a tight schedule with, with mm-hmm. what we had, uh, everyone had to bring their 100%. That goes yeah. from all the cast and crew. Um, so, I mean, you know, we're very proud to be able mm-hmm. to at least accomplish that and put this out there for the audience right. to experience now. Right. So what do you believe was the most challenging part in bringing this film to life? And what about the easiest? I would say, yeah, that the timing and scheduling <laughs> of everything, it, like I said, because we were during the pandemic mm-hmm. and there were challenges, it's like every day you're on set is a risk factor for, you know, possibly getting shut down or having, you mm-hmm. know, and we were a COVID uh, uh, safe set uh, 100% right. uh, along the way because we're also SAG. So we, mm-hmm. we maintain all the standard protocol. Yeah. And so not knowing like, okay, you know, tomorrow we might, you know, go to set and be shut down. Mm-hmm. And then what do we do? And so yeah. uh, there was a lot of adapting that we had to do as we went along. And then obviously, yeah. you know, with the 11 day shooting schedule, there were many challenges that we had to like, just uh, be ready for and have the solution ready on point. So we're not mm-hmm. wasting any time yeah. and we can, you know, fix the issues as we, as we yeah. go and so we had to be prepared Absolutely. for that across the board like i said the cast and crew they were on it and mm-hmm. so we had that sync of just getting the job done and, mm-hmm. and making a movie yeah absolutely and the fact that like you have such a limited schedule the 11 days like if anything came to light which was like an issue or like some type of you know it, you know like um like some type of problem that would arise or whatever on set, like like you said, you really need to fix this quickly because if you don't, you only have eleven days. It's not like you know. Yeah, you have time money on a yep. film production like this. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, I guess what approach did you take in directing this film? Was there any like specific things that you wanted, you know, this film to have done, or can you like kind of explain your uh, process in the direction of this film? Yeah. So. Um... You know, obviously we started with the script. There was mm-hmm. a lot of um, rewrites and uh, notes that went back mm-hmm. and forth and uh, we had to do a lot of polishes and get that ready. And, and the whole, you know, the story and the, the core of the script was always very mm-hmm. strong. So that helped and Koji did a great job with working with us and writing the script. Um, and, you know, I, I think um, as a whole, you know, uh, preparing for the different elements Mm -hmm. that went into uh, the film where it was a multi-genre combination Mm -hmm. of some action. And then, you know, we had to do some research to uh, make sure we had all the PTSD aspect of it, uh, you know, correct and and with proper information because we were representing an issue and and an organization and, and a group of people that is a very serious uh, subject matter in our society. And we wanted to make sure, you know, we paid good focus on that. Um, And at the same time, you know, some of the action, we had to do um, a lot of uh, rehearsals, which uh, on the day of, you know, things had to change because of locations or injuries or whatnot. And we had to adapt again. Um, But, you know, as filmmakers, we're problem solvers, uh, you know, as, as that's our number one priority Mm -hmm. so right really just gathering up all the plan a b's and c's Mm -hmm. and having them in our back pocket and being prepared with uh, multiple options of solutions Mm -hmm. moving forward since we had such a tight schedule for prep and production and uh, you know for that you have to always know you don't have time to waste like we were talking about and and mainly prepare for that Uh, and we kept the general you know, uh, production and cinematography and the filmmaking mm-hmm. style kind of, yeah. you know, uh, simple. So yeah. we could focus on some of the other aspects of 
you know, uh, the actors and the action and, and right. scheduling. So we're not having to set up complex, mm -hmm. you know, camera movements and riggings and things like that, that uh, would waste a lot of time or take up a lot of time during right. a normal shoot. So we had to make sacrifices and adapt and, and kind of go with the punches, but we were ready yeah. for it. Absolutely. So is there a specific scene or like a part of the film that you think will shock the audiences when they see this movie? And if so, can you kind of like tease that scene? There is one. Um, I, I won't say too much to give it away, but the way, you know, the group of bad guys that invade, uh, you know, James Baker, Michael Jai White's home, um, out of that group, the first kill, the first guy that gets killed you know, by actually, I'll, I'll give this right. much, by actually uh, the character Sebastian, who's playing Michael J. White's, you know, best friend, mm -hmm. who comes to check up on, you know, his daughters who are at home alone. And then this is when all that invasion happens. And that right. first kill of when the first bad guy dies, I think mm -hmm. was pretty shocking. I remember sitting in the audience in the theater um, and people were definitely shocked by that. And then, you know, some, some of the other kills of, of, of you know those party patrons i guess mm -hmm. that happen um but i'll let you you know decide yes. for yourself when the audience watches absolutely so what was it like directing michael j white and mickey Oric? it was actually um quite fun you know we all had fun on set got along and and you know of course you know during you know those challenging times on set mm -hmm. and days there were some tense moments of, yeah of um you know we all wanted to do our best job and uh you know michael he he's a legendary martial artist and also a great actor in his own right mm -hmm. you know mickey who we had, we had limited time with but um you know mickey Rourke is a legend i mean you just have yeah. to kind of let him do his thing mm -hmm. and he's very collaborative as well so you got to be able to give these actors the freedom that yeah. they deserve to be able to really bring their uh, skill set and mm -hmm. experience to the character. Um, I don't like to treat them, or any actor for that matter, I don't like to treat them like robots. Mm -hmm. you know, they're artists in their yeah. own rights. They have a skill set. They, they bring a certain type of talent. Every one mm -hmm. of them have an individual you know, creative mind mm -hmm. that they can bring to make the character in the movie better so i love Absolutely. that collaboration process and that freedom that they have and we have to be able to discuss and collaborate and mm -hmm. fix things so they were both very open to that and right. especially mickey i mean you know he's the best when he can uh, improv and just be mickey you know yeah. i mean that's what you get when you get mickey Rourke. Mm -hmm. you get uh, a style that no one else has so right. um it was fun exploring that and playing around with these guys, uh, what, nice. what they do best. Nice. And as he said earlier, um, the commando is available now. You can uh, view it on, I'm assuming it's on, it's in limited theaters and is it, like, is it online anywhere that you can view it? Yeah, it's, uh, out everywhere. Apple TV, Amazon, uh, Google, YouTube, wow. uh, I think Roku has different channels, okay. but it's basically anywhere you can get video on demand. Nice. and digital you know uh purchase and rentals and and i'm sure it'll be on i believe paramount plus and other streamers uh, okay. later on you know after awesome. A month or two. awesome so the last question i have for you do you have any other projects in the works that you would like to promote to the listening and viewing audience as well as any websites or social media accounts that you would like to plug yeah i'm producing a lot uh so there's you know always a film here and there that's coming out that i produce and i also just um directed on another film uh we just wrapped last week uh yeah. on the production it's called uh, mojave diamonds yeah. it's uh, another action very exciting action film that uh, we're very proud of it's uh, a lot of the same team and producers yeah. from the commando and um it has cowboy Cerrone, chill sun in rampage jackson weston cage um so a lot of great guys that i think you know we're going to be able to bring something new to the table with so I'm very excited with that. And then I have a few other productions going into, um, you know, green lighting uh, in the next few weeks. And so I'm, I'm, I got a pack 2022 <laughs> coming up that I'm very excited and blessed for. 
Nice, nice. And uh, for anybody that wants to see any of those projects that Asif is on, you can obviously check out his IMDb page. Um, I'm sure you have an IMDb. So uh, check that yeah. out and uh, you'll see all of his updated projects, uh, past, present, and future. If you're looking at this, you know, a year from now, this interview, and you want to see what Asif is up to, you, like I said, you could check out any projects he has in the works, and I'm sure they'll be updated accordingly. Yeah. That's awesome. Excellent. Thank you, Scotty. Awesome. Not a problem. Thank you, Asif, for uh, joining me uh, for this uh, interview. My pleasure. All right. Thank you have you. a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.